Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast gives a brief introduction to SPSS version 23. When you open SPSS for the first time, you will get the following screen. Unless you want to open some fairly old SPSS files, then select Use Unicode Encoding. You only have to do this once, and from now on, each time you start SPSS, you will get the switchboard page, which gives you a number of options, including accessing tutorials, opening previous or new files, or opening a new dataset. We're going to choose the latter. So I select New Dataset and press OK. We start off with what looks like a spreadsheet, but with one difference in that data from the same sample or population must appear in the same column. This is very sensible as it helps to keep your data and mind in order. Each row represents a data from a single individual organism or sampling entity. So let's enter some data. Column 1 contains the gender of 6 humans. Column 2, their height in centimetres. Column 3, their t-shirt size as small, medium and large. And column 4, the year of study in a 3 year university degree. As we can see, the data is not formatted very well. Column 2 and 4 have more decimal places than needed. And in column 3, the data is abutting the data in column 2, making it difficult to read. SPSS also requires us to enter some information about these variables so that it can make sensible decisions later when we ask it to do some analysis. We give this information to SPSS and can attend to the formatting issues using the variable view. To do this, we track down to the variable view tab and click. The first thing I'm going to do is to give each variable a sensible name. This will help me when instructing SPSS to run a test and to understand the data that SPSS gives me. So I'm going to track up to var00001 and replace the name with gender and enter. The second variable I will call height and enter. The third variable is t-shirt size and enter. We have an error. This is because SPSS doesn't allow you to use spaces and some symbols in the variable name. To get around this, I'm going to use the underscore as follows. Get rid of the error, pick in the cell, and I'm going to type T underscore shirt underscore size and enter. Now that variable will make a lot more sense to me, but SPSS displays some outputs such as graphs when I would really like it to display the correct English version of the variable name. To do this, I track over to label and click and type T-shirt size as I would like it to appear and enter. From now on, when I produce graphs or the like, this is how the variable t-shirt size will appear. Finally, variable 4, I'm going to call level. So let's go through these variables one at a time and set some of the other attributes. We can see in gender column 2, SPSS has identified it as a string. This is correct. If you wanted to change this, you would click in the relevant cell and as you can see, SPSS has given you a set of options. I'm going to press OK to leave it as a string. In the width column, it has the value 1. This is SPSS recognising that my data is a single letter. There are obviously no decimals. I would like the gender data to be in the centre of the column, so I'm going to go up to a line, click in the cell, and select centre. Finally, SPSS has recognised that gender is nominal data, that is, categorical data that cannot be ordered. You cannot say that males are better than females, or females are better than males. For the variable height, it has correctly identified it as a number and is displaying it to two decimal places. To make it neater, I'm going to reduce this to no decimal places as none of my data points have a decimal place. The next point I want to attend to is the measure. SPSS has identified this as unknown. Height is measured on a number scale and is a scale data. If I click in the relevant cell, you can see it gives me the option of scale, ordinal and nominal and I'm going to select scale for this data. For t-shirt, again, it has correctly identified it as string that it is one letter data and that it has no decimal places. I would like this data to be centered in the column, so I'm going to click on the relevant cell and select center, and it has identified the measure as nominal. This is not true. The data is actually ordinal data because I can order the categorical data. I know that small is smaller than medium and medium is smaller than large, although I do not know if the difference between small and medium is the same as between medium and large. To change this, I'm going to click in the cell and select ordinal. Finally, we have the level data. SPSS has identified this correctly as numeric, but again, I want to reduce the number of decimals down to zero. Now this variable concerns the modules from which year a student was studying in a three-year degree. But not all students study third-year modules in their third year, 
a part-time student may study third year modules in their sixth year. Therefore, instead of displaying the year of the degree that they are studying, it is better to display the level. I can get SPSS to do this by assigning values to each year. I do this as follows. I track over to values and I click. The cursor is in the value box and I'm going to place the number 1 and give it the label level 4. And add. I'm going to place 2 in the value box and give it the value level 5. 3 I will give the value level 6. And add. And press OK. My data in the level variable now has values associated with it. We can see SPSS has classified the measure for this variable as unknown. This too is going to be ordinal. Because we can rank it, we know students studying first year modules are less advanced than students studying second year modules. But we cannot say a student studying third year modules has done it in the same time frame as another student. Now let's see how our variables are now displayed. I track down to data view and click. Variables are now better formatted and SPSS is now using the variable names that we entered as the labels at the top of each column. In the level variable however, it is still showing my raw data and not the values. To show the values, I track up to view, click and down to value labels. Now we can see the values associated with each data point. Alternatively, I can click the split arrow containing the 1 and the A to toddle between the raw data and the values. To save our data in a file, I will track over to File, and click, and down to Save in the menu Options list that appears, and click. I now track down to the File Name box and give it an appropriate name. SPSS will automatically save it as a .sav file, which is SPSS's own file format. Alternatively, you can save it in the comma delimited format. The value of this is most other statistics programs can read this format if you ever wish to transfer the data and we press save. We're now ready to do some analysis and if we track across the menu bar we can see that SPSS gives us many different options and functions to do our analysis with. Sometimes this can seem a little bit bewildering but the actual number of options we need to do our analysis is relatively small and with the research methods for the biosciences book and my screencasts, you can be assured that you will be able to select and do the appropriate analysis for your data.